welcome to Heaven Encounters. I am your host, Randy Kay, and we will be talking with those like me who encountered the afterlife, either in heaven and in some cases, even hell. Hi, Randy Kay here with Heaven Encounters. My guest today, Tina Schmidt, had four near-death experiences. She had a traumatic accident as a child and then died subsequently. Uh, we've got to get right to this, Tina. Welcome to the show because there's so much to cover in uh, in your account. So uh, welcome. And, uh, and I'm going to hand it over to you, Tina, to begin with that first incident that really changed your life. Thank you, Randy. Thank you so much for having me here. And it's a pleasure to give the glory to Jesus and to our Father God who has saved my life and walked me through the fires of hell and, and into his kingdom. So I thank you. Um, my first out of body and spiritual experience was a very traumatic. It was in 1966 and I was five years old and I had an accident and um, was playing around climbing on something and when I fell, um, my, I fell straight down on the ground and crushed the right side of my head in. It busted my skull in and caused a acute epidural hematoma. And so um, uh, I was rushed to the hospital and they had to um, do emergency surgery, of course, but uh, as soon as um, I got to the hospital, I was sort of bouncing in and out of the body. I remember floating up and looking down sort of indifferent at the child down there, but then they stuck this rubber mask on the face of my body and I remember smelling. And so that smell pushed me back into the body and it was very offensive, like this rubber smell. And then I popped out of the body again. And so there were doctors working on me and I, my soul now just sort of buoyanted around the room like a helium balloon. And then it sort of bounced on the ground gently. I saw their feet and then I was swept away. And the only way to explain this is I was swept away in what I now know as the second heaven, which is the, the you know, the dark kingdom. And I was witnessed, I mean, witnessing this uh, very strange entity, which I now know to be the devil, but as a five-year-old, you don't know how to put this together. So anyway, this being was very big and uh, grayish looking with swarms and thousands and thousands of vibrating, wormy looking lines in them, which uh, look, um, each one of those things had, were spirits actually. And it made up this being. And I remember looking up at him saying, in my heart, I knew, even though I was five years old, but my spirit knew, I said, this being has dominion here. He just looked like um, an incredible, strong force. And then this angel or the Lord next to me, whom I didn't know um, face to face, pointed down at the earth. And I looked at the earth and I saw it had been covered in sort of a grayish film. But then I looked closer and closer and I began to see lights around the whole place, lights. And I began to get concerned for my own family. And I wanted to see my family. I wanted to see my family. So as I zeroed in, um, I began to descend and go. And then I sort of blacked out. Now on the other side, my mom she was a Methodist um, Christian and I had been in a coma. They had done some surgery to, you know, and they had to take big chunks of the bone out of the side of my skull and let the brain swell out because it was crushed in and swelling inward and it affected my optic nerve and my survival because um, it was just shutting down um, brain systems. I went into a coma and I was, probably in the coma a, a few weeks. My mom had told me later about it, but she had prayed to the God and the doctors were saying she hasn't passed any reflex tests and they were poking me in the eye and in the foot and there was no uh, responses. So they put it in her hands to either let me go off the life support um, systems and, and all of this. And so she prayed and prayed and God gave her a vision in a dream that showed I was sitting upright with a bandage wrapped around my head. And so, so she was so grateful. And she told the doctors based on that dream, no, don't cut her off, let her, let her keep going. And eventually I did recover. And when she came into the hospital to see me, I was in that exact position. So he answered her prayer 
um, and it gave to me um, a second chance at life. So that was my first NDE. And at uh, 1974, I believe I became a Christian. I was 13 years old and joined a church. And for the first time in my life, I experienced the love of Jesus. It was an outpouring of love over me that was just unlike any human love. And it gave me hope and courage for my future. Um, I was raised in a very, very difficult environment, very, very um, abusive by um, our father, our dad. And uh, it was uh, very, very difficult. And I think that sort of set the groundwork for some of this uh, negative spiritual um, activity. So anyway, um, I became a Christian and it, the Lord began to bless me and open up spiritual gifts to me. He gave me hope and he gave me faith that I could have a, a better future. I moved out of the house at 17 and um, I embarked on, you know, getting my life, life together and never looking back. And I got my own apartment um, at uh, 17, but I had to say I was 18 <laughs> and have um, um, help with that. So Tina, you had a second encounter. This time you suffered from pneumonia and then your heart stopped. You rolled over and literally suffocated on your pillow. So tell us what happened subsequent to that event. Right, so I... Um, I got to a point, and this is setting up my second near-death experience, um, I became very ill and I didn't have any insurance. I didn't have any um, medical um, way to, to uh, pay for these um, uh, medical expenses if I had to go to the doctor. So I put it off and I got very ill. I thought maybe I had a flu or a cold or something, but I was getting real ill and I couldn't get up out of bed and apparently I uh, rolled over and suffocated face down in my pillow. Now this experience was very, very, very tangible. Um, what I heard in the background before departing my body was a pounding sound that was long and drawn out, which I thought was a drum. And I said, what, why am I hearing this drum? Is the neighbors playing this drum? And then uh, the drum slowed down and finally stopped. And, it, and I thought, oh, somebody's stopping that drum finally. And then I realized much later that it wasn't a drum. But in this part of the experience, I felt condensed, like my whole system was shrinking. All that I was was shrinking tight like a golf ball. And then I simultaneously felt a strange sensation of on the back of my head. And then I popped out of the back of my head. So I'm looking down at my body, face down in the pillow, and it was limp and flat. And I began to panic and I was screaming at the top of my lungs, reaching and clawing intuitively to get back into my body. And suddenly I was stretched out like a ribbon, just pulled like this. And I ended up landing into a dark abysmal void. I ended up, like I said, coming down and filling up my body like I was liquid being poured back into this vessel. And as I filled up to the top of my head, the strangest sensation was I could feel I was both this spirit liquid and I was also this body and everything was plugging back in the way it was supposed to. But then I heard that drum again and it was very slow, started up and then it picked up and then it got faster and picked up a rhythm and it went boom, 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 boom. It was my heart and I had never recognized it when I was in that altered state of um, my spirit. Well, I was so heavy and I couldn't move my flesh for the longest time. It felt like it took me just five minutes to roll over to the side. And I had so much difficulty breathing. I was gasping for air and uh, finally uh, made a phone call to get some help. And then I went into the hospital and found out that I had had pneumonia and I hadn't recognized it. And it was literally just filling up my lungs and, and it you know, made me weak enough to suffocate on my pillow. So um, shortly after that, um, Jesus's presence came to assure me, he came into the room, but it, and it was so potent and so powerful, but I didn't recognize it because these experiences Experiences had traumatized me and any concern me 
I felt like I didn't have any control over what was going on. So I didn't recognize the love of the Lord when he came in this time. And it was quite a few years before the Lord straightened all that out and really gave me a, an amazing, powerful visit um, to, to let me know about him and about heaven. And that takes me over to the event of visiting heaven um, after my brother passed away. He had a mysterious uh, uh, health problem that came up and uh, he went into a coma and uh, he passed away. And prior to passing away, an angel had told me in my uh, right ear the exact day. And I fought against that and we prayed, I prayed day and night. And uh, finally, before he passed away, we said some amazing words. The Holy Spirit filled me and gave him blessed assurance and he passed away the next day um after the funeral and everybody had gone home and me being quite exhausted and tired um i just collapsed on my bed and in grief deep profound grief because i had been by his side for 40 days waiting for him to come back and, he, and it didn't happen well i got an amazing adventure uh the next thing i knew i was go lifted up and being moved at incredible high speed through a tunnel with the flashing lights going by. And I kept hearing the wind as if, as if I was going at a great speed, just thousand miles an hour. And up ahead of me, there was a, a vortex that opened and just shot through like this. And I hit the ground running at full speed and I was in heaven. I was running on the green pastures of heaven and there were trees and mountains and everything. And in the distance, I saw someone running towards me and it was my brother. And we came together like this, just came together and hugged each other, slamming together like this. And I had been running and he was running and we came together and held each other so tight and so much joy filled me. We had embraced and embraced in the light of God and everything was perfect. Everything was perfect. And we step back and I look at him, he's completely healed. He is remarkable, glowing with the, the, the glow of the Lord on him. All of his, his incision marks were gone. He was a completely healed person. And incidentally, other family members who had not passed away at that time came running towards me and so I was greeted by family, and it was a very, very amazing, joyful uh, occasion. And we spoke and had some uh, wonderful words. He couldn't remember anything his side um, before he passed away. And then I got a call back. It was strange. It was like there was an angel here, and he, you know, it's time to go. And then I went back. And so um, in returning, I found myself being and being sad and full of grief that I've lost my brother, the other having seen him on the other side. And I was so full of this amazing divine joy and knowing the joy of the Lord and knowing that heaven was so much um, so real. And, and I part of me was still there because when I went there, I knew it was heaven and I knew I was there where I was supposed to be. So it was a very strange feeling to um, have the dichotomy of the, those two realities uh, when I came back. Mm. You know, Tina, you had multiple experiences, obviously. Um, so you had the uh, experience that was um, tormenting in, uh, in hell initially, and you had the experience after you had died uh, from uh, pneumonia and suffocation, your heart had stopped. But then you had this brilliant uh, experience that the Lord gave you with your brother. Both of you had experienced traumatic abuse uh, mm -hmm. during your childhood. So I'm sure that uh, must have drawn you closer together. Um, and the Lord seemed to be patterning a, a storyline for you of healing. Yes. Uh, to you and so that he could enact something within your life and there's another event that um, that he gave to you which um, which is more healing and maybe the consummation of that uh, that healing in your life tell us about that yes um, thank you Randy um, uh, with all the different health challenges uh, you know from that 
accident when I was a, a child, having had my head split open and a piece of my skull taken out and the recovery afterwards, the mobility issues and the, the strength issues and just the determination to get through a lot of the pain that had come from having that brain uh, damage. Um, it, it was a challenge in my life and the Lord had been calling me uh, over and over and over. So, so um, my, I wanna go ahead a little bit um, past some of these health challenges. Uh, into this most profound experience of Jesus in the most amazing way. I had been seeking him all my life. And I was after that amazing love that he had introduced me to. And I, I, I searched high and low. And um, in, in this case, he really opened it up for me. So uh, I was uh, sleeping and I woke up in sitting upright and being it was like pay attention and then suddenly I, I seemed to be rushed off into this glory and a thousand million billion colors just exploded right before me coming at me like a fan blowing out and it went Poof! and I look into this glaring light of a display of color and I see Jesus on a glory throne clouds around him, seated on a throne as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. This was the most profound experience. And even thinking about it now draws upon all that blessing. It's still there resonating for me. And this happened in 2015. And I had been in through a lot of challenges, having gone through uh, some very serious health uh, challenges. And in this amazing experience, I'm looking into the glory thousands and millions of colors still spraying out into all eternity. And I see Jesus on this throne. He has blue, but the blue is alive. It's just radiating out beams of color. And then his head is so bright, shining with a white, white light. And I can barely see the outline of his eyes and his nose and his mouth and a little bit here of the beard. But it's it's being uh, blinded out by this glory light all around him and coming off of him as a being, coming off of his radiance was thousands and millions of colors, just waving, waving like this into all eternity. And then I'm looking at, I'm, I'm just in awe, I'm awestruck, frozen, just couldn't take my eyes off of him. He has a crown, but it's not like a metal crown. What I saw was a crown made out of gold light. And it was more than just something like this, but it was right around this, like a Corona. And then it was beaming out with streams of light. And above it was more flashes of gold light. It was like, you know, the Bible says the, uh, he has the, um, he has, he's a crown and wears a crown of many crowns. This looked like layers and layers of blasting light crowns going off of his head. So in these beams of color coming off of him that had fanned out into all eternity, I saw a rainbow over his head, over this gold, beautiful gold crown. I saw this rainbow, just it, all the, how can you have a rainbow amidst all these other colors? Well, it was there, just beautiful, beautiful. And then Randy, he does the most amazing thing. This will be with me for the rest of my life. It's like he reached over me, uh, over my head, and he drew this line like this. And out above me came the, mo the most powerful liquid love I have ever. It was unearthly. And he wanted me awake and aware through all of this. He poured it through and it was slow and fluid and I could feel it saturate my head, my, my cells, my brain, my bones. It went all the way through very slow, perfectly down my spine, through my organs, all the way down to my feet. And what he, he didn't even say a word, but this was, he was showing me his love and pouring it over me. I'm telling you, I went from stunned, feeling that love, to overwhelming joy, to bliss. And I, you know, it was, and I, he radiated that to me 
for what appeared to be an eternity, the longest time. And, and if I had stayed there for eternity, it would have been perfectly fine to stay before my savior and worship him. Well, I finally, you know, when I came back to, I was laying on my bed in the most amazing rested position, sunk deep, like, you know, and I could still hear the glories uh, of heaven. And I, I woke up with an, an, a knowing, I was in tears. I had been crying and weeping with joy over, over this amazing expression of the Lord's love. And um, it got me through some of the toughest times that were ahead and what I had been through behind. And he never said, I love you, but he demonstrated it in this most profound and beautiful way. Tina, uh, I know all of us certainly have been blessed by your account. Um, we can't help but notice the paintings in the background. You are an artist. And uh, many times I've been asked if um, you know, this painting or that painting reflects Jesus most accurately. And I've got to say, um, I have looked at your paintings. The one to your right over your shoulder is more impressionistic a, a portrayal of Jesus. Uh, that one, uh, all of these uh, art pieces of artwork you have done uh, during these stages that you've just uh, explained to us, that one in the center there to your left, mm -hmm. as I looked at that close up as, as you sent that to me, I've got to say, that's the first time I have looked at a painting or a, a picture of Jesus and thought, that's the Jesus that I met in yeah. heaven. There's you know an anointing on you. Thank you. Yeah, that's the Jesus I saw too. And um, he's come to me many times now. I think um, because of, it, it, you know, this, the, the journey in life with illnesses and things like that, um, I think sometimes weakening the flesh strengthens the spirit if we're walking with him. And he has come to me at different times. And he showed me his glory on the, on the throne. And then he's come again as the savior. Uh, when he came to my house, uh, or, uh, came into my room and led me to the kitchen. I told you about that event. And then another time he's come dressed in very casual um, and uh, shown himself to me as a loving brother or a, a, a kin, you know? And when you see Jesus, the most remarkable thing is you know he's Jesus and you know you're part of him. I cannot explain how this, how you just know. It's like you're knowing in your spirit and your mind suddenly understands it in your heart. It's like, I know him and he knows me and we're related. We're made in his image. And so there's an instant recognition, instant, uh, I want to say it's brotherly love or brotherly kinship. That's the only way to explain it. And uh, he basically has opened these doors for me to follow. And he has never forced himself on me, but he's opened these doors because I've sought him and in, in earnest. And he's opened and let me follow and opened and let me follow. And so this is the most amazing part of the relationship. He's not going to force it on us, but he wants to lead us by love. And, and I think that's one of the most important things I learned. Mm. Tina, why do you think that our Lord gave you this, these myriad of experiences beginning as a child, uh, again, having gone through abuse in this hellish place to the full revelation of his glory? Why do you think he did that? And what's the takeaway for you uh, today and how that's changed your life? Thank you for asking that, Randy. That is the most important uh, question we can ask in our relationship with the Lord of what this is about. One of the things I want to say for me is that uh, going through the, the valley of the shadow of death and going through the valley and the trials of life, we begin as Christians to uncover the mighty power of the emanations of God. He gives us hope and faith strength and courage and all of these things because those emanations that we think we should give to him and walk our life he's already been giving that to us since the beginning god has had hope in our return to him since the beginning he's had faith 
that his children will come back to him. Since the beginning, he's had um, strength in his own faithfulness to us. He, he's what we develop in ourselves. He's been radiating to us since the very beginning. And so it's our journey as Christians to discover this. And when we discover those spiritual gifts and those and exercise those through the trials of life, we, imp we become his, his walking on earth. We become the emanation of God's throne itself when we embody his spirit through Jesus. I want to take quickly to uh, um, Genesis. In Genesis 32, where Jacob wrestled with the angel, Jacob had, he had stolen a birthright. And so this angel was going to teach him in the 12 hours of that night or the eight hours, whatever it was, he was going to say, if you're going to be worthy of carrying the birthright of our savior and, and carry the birthright of these people, you're going to wrestle with me and I'm going to teach you some things. So the wrestling was actually training, a condensed training. And I think that's what we're in. Also in uh, Judges, in Judges um, 21, uh, or no, it's I think it's two. To, anyway, it's in Judges 2, 2.1 or, or 21, something like that. Um, the, um, it's, it explains why God allows evil to happen. And it says, because the children of e Egypt who had learned warfare had passed away, the newer generation knew nothing of warfare. And so it says God allowed the evil to stay because they had made covenants with these other uh, nations. And because they made co covenants, it became an ensnarement. And so they, it says, uh, he left them in place to teach them warfare. And now that we are with Jesus and we've moved into what Jesus released to us through his blood, we are carrying on that spiritual warfare. It says in Luke, um, spirit, God, Jesus gives us the spiritual authority. I give you the authority to uh, over all the powers of the enemy to crush the snakes and scorpions and the great lion, you know, things like that. All of that is given to us and we, we are to exercise it. So what I've learned through this spiritual warfare, and there's been plenty, is that Jesus has given us and armed us with everything we need. He's appropriated it for us and we have to embrace it and grow in that mighty power of those emanations of the Holy Spirit. And that and the blood of the Lord, the blood of Jesus is what is what we're here for. We're here to move the kingdom on earth. Yes. Well, you know, I wish we had more time. To, you know, we've condensed in a very short period of time, yeah. a lifetime of experiences with the Lord in heaven and also in, uh, in that other place that none of us ever want to experience, certainly. So, um, we're going to have to say goodbye now, but we want to thank you, Tina, for sharing with us. And until next time, if you are in Jesus, Yeshua, uh, be of good cheer because heaven is in your future. Take care and God bless. Thank you.